Good morning, everybody. Today, I want to talk to you about the whole resource situation in Europe, uh, because obviously, with the current crisis in Ukraine, um, several things are being uh, basically thrown up in the in the air, and people don't know what the future will be like. So currently, the EU is preparing a gas embargo and an oil embargo because what we are currently doing is basically this we are funding the war in ukraine because our economy runs for a large portion on imports from russia and we import coal gas and we import oil in large volumes so it's quite hard to say okay let's 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 stop you know i'm in favor of saying that just to be clear but i can i understand why governments don't do that the trouble is that we are too late with whatever we want to do uh, whatever we want to do um you know in terms of making sure that our that our economy will become less dependent on russia is not going to come soon enough for Russia to understand that uh, we won't be funding their wars anymore. So, uh, for instance, if we want to replace uh, natural gas fire power plants with nuclear fire power, not fire, by nuclear power plants, uh, this will take years because there's bureaucracy, but there's also simply the matter of you know the supply chains are there but they only have a certain bandwidth a certain output they can't put more out than they are doing now maybe they can ramp up i don't know but i don't believe that they can ramp up like by a factor of five or ten which would be needed if we would want to wean ourselves off nuclear power tomorrow or wean ourselves off gas power tomorrow so um let's consider what is going on then because the europeans are also thinking about um renewables you know in some cases they think well maybe renewables are the answer but then now finally uh you know it is dawning on these people that um we can't have renewable energy without involving china and china at this moment is not distancing themselves from russia in fact they are tacitly supporting russia they even proclaimed this friendship without bounds this this comradeship without bounds with russia just when the war started so people are now thinking well if we want to build you know massive solar parks or if we want to build uh windmills that contain certain elements like permanent magnets that invariably means that you need to import stuff from china in large bulk you know in bulk in large quantities so um which which gets us to the nitty-gritty of this thing um you know changing this paradigm will take a long time but it also will take a lot of considerations you know we need to think about how we have structured things in terms of rules and regulations and one of these things that i want to address this time in this video is for instance the rare earth uh monopoly that china has uh, if you didn't know, rare earths uh, and thorium love each other. There's very few rare earth mineralizations that don't have uh, large amounts of thorium in it. But if you want to make the full course of 16 available rare earths out of the 17 rare earths, uh, you need to do monazites, xenotimes, and that we do not do in this country. There is no, there is nothing being done in the United States or anywhere in the Western world. Uh, and that is because when you do monazites, you probably get about as much thorium out of the mineral as you do rare earths. 
so there is a tr- there is a problem whenever you want to uh whenever you want to uh mine rare earths chances are big that you will also be mining thorium or uranium especially monazite for instance if you want to mine monazite uh, monazite is uh, is a mineral that that gives us uh, neodymium, amongst other things. Uh, also, yttrium, I believe. Don't don't quote me on that. But there's there's a couple of rare earth elements in there that are useful in today's age. So when you want to mine this mineral, you will invariably extract thorium and extract uranium. And these are then considered norm, so natural occurring radioactive materials. And it's very, you know, we are very afraid of norms in Europe, which means that if you, if you, you basically can't excavate or mine uh, these minerals without, you know, very restrictive rules that you have to abide by. So, so here's the catch. There's plenty of rare earth elements in Europe, in the Nordics, uh, Scandinavia, uh, Norway, Sweden, Finland. They have very rich rare earth deposits. So what needs to happen, and this is something that has been uh, pioneered by John Kutch and Jim Kennedy in the U.S., is that if we want to reboot a rare earth industry in Europe, which is needed if you want to stop being so dependent on China, then you have to uh, think smartly about the rules that come, you know, that are imposed upon businesses that want to extract rare earth elements so what john coach and jim kennedy came up with is, is is actually brilliant so whenever you you mine this stuff and you start refining it basically what you do is you try to extract the element that you want to get and you make sure that you get the uh, you know, you're, you're you're basically sifting it, and and in in one process you get the neodymium out, and in one process uh, you purify the neodymium, and in another process you have this waste stream. So in this waste stream, what you need to do is you need to isolate the thorium, and you need to isolate the uranium. I don't know how easy it is, but but it's probably something that can be done chemically. Um, and what you do next is once you've isolated these two these two waste streams, you put them into neat little caskets or you know containers of some sort, and then you offer them to a specialized company who stores this stuff in some kind of a building that has been specifically designed to do so. And this is interesting because uh, this 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 brings us to a parallel to something else that happens in the Netherlands. So in the Netherlands we have Covra, and Covra basically uh, stands for centralized uh, storage for radioactive materials, right? And they have this giant blue building, and in this blue building they have stored uh, uranium trioxide. Uh, no, wait a second, uh, triuranium octoxide yeah it's, it's u308 um so 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 what this is is this is the residue this is depleted uranium uh you know the residue from enrichment so in 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 the netherlands we have an enrichment facility and this enrichment facility enriches nuclear fuel for nuclear power reactors so it enriches it up to you know below five percent basically and, and what is left after you've done that is depleted uranium. There's almost no uranium-235 in there left. It's all U3, U238. And that then gets transported to this Covra and gets stored in the blue building, the blue box. And I once asked them, how do you, um, how do you, you know, what do you consider this to be, the stuff that is stored inside this blue box? And then they said, well, it's waste. And then I say, you need to rebrand it. It's not waste. 
it's a bank. It's the blue bank of the Netherlands, the biggest, you know, uh, let's say, strategic energy stockpile in the Netherlands. Because even though it's only U238, it's still fertile material that can be used in breeder reactors. So what we need is another blue box for thorium. You know, the thorium that is left after you have ex excavated the monazite uh, or, or whatever, el uh, whatever other mineral there is that you want to extract for its, you know, material contents. And that's th that, that requires a rethinking of things because um, one of the biggest problems in the nuclear world, the nuclear PR, is that it's always talking about waste. And, you know, people are always saying, well, we need, we don't need, we, we can't do nuclear because we will be making waste that lasts for hundreds and thousands of years. And, and, and that's something that we cannot do. And, 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 you know, if we rethink what, you know, um, what we can do with radioactive materials and with fertile materials, and if we consider that even the stuff that comes out of a nuclear reactor, you know, it has fission products. Some of these fission products can be reused, but it also has a lot of U238 that can be reused, and it has some plutonium that can be reused in power reactors. So there's so much we can still do with all this stuff. Um, so this is my advice to the, to the EU, is to rethink nuclear waste, rethink norm, natural occurring radioactive materials and look at it as an oper as a cash and an economic opportunity for the future uranium is in there thorium is in there and these are valuable valuable materials that we can use for power production for the production of medical isotopes and a whole host of other things that we might not yet have thought about so it's not waste it's not a problem, it's an actual opportunity. So that was it. Thank you all for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.